Good day friends, today we are going to see the hypervest fixed firefighting system. This is a water based local firefighting system and uh, in the coming slides uh, we will learn about uh, what are the functions of this, how this hypervest uh, firefighting system works and uh, what are the advantages of it, what are the SOLAS requirement for the hypervest system. requirements under FSS code. So this is as per the SOLAS guidelines. Okay. So if you can see this one, the administration need to approve uh, the number of and arrangement of the nodules. Okay. So as you can see over here, the administration will need to approve the number and arrangements of uh, nozzle. And next one is something which is talking about the number of arrangements when it is being already approved by the administration. Uh, it must be able to ensure the effective average distribution of the water at the minimum rate. The rate is important. Mostly in the MCQs it is being asked. 5 liter per meter square per mi minute in the space to be protected or area to be protected. Next is your, if this uh, rate which is being uh, considered, that is your 5 liters per meter square per minute, then the uh, is, is inadequate, then in that case, uh, so the rate of application is uh, increased and uh, the increased rate must be uh, up to the satisfaction of administration. Administration here is your flag state, so they will be doing the concentration part. Next, the steps to be taken to ensure that the nozzles are not clogged. So, uh, in working time uh, or in normal operations, you have to make sure that the nozzle should be maintained. It should not be clogged. Impurities in the water or the chips arising out of the corrosion at the pipings, nozzles of the valves or the air reservoir and pump, they should not clog it. Okay. So, that maintenance requirement has to be. Uh, next, if we see this in continuation with uh, the requirements, uh, you have the pump. This must be able uh, to simultaneously supply at the stipulated pressure, whatever the design required pressure of that particular system and all sections of the system in any one compartment to be protected. That is the requirement. Then the next is the pump may be driven by independent internal combustion machinery. Possibly, mostly the uh, main power supply is there uh, and uh, if it is not then you have the internal combustion machinery or internal combustion engine extra is attached to it okay next is uh, if the pump is dependent on the power being supplied from the emergency generator the said emergency generator must be able to start automatically as per solas guidelines we know that this uh, should come within 45 seconds of the uh, power cut so this is the thing so you have the main backup main power supply and the emergency power supply also so two independent source of supply will be there this will enable the alternative multi power of the pump to be available immediately in case of the failure of the main power okay so that is the requirement then the independent internal combustion machinery suppose it is being used so this is driving the pump it should be such that fire in the space or spaces will not affect the air supply of the machinery so if it is ic engine attached then uh, this uh, concentration is there so fire in that particular space should not affect it uh, the air supply of the uh, ic engine so next part uh, again the requirements continued uh, the system installation should be outside machinery spaces. So this ensures the previous requirement when we talk about this outside the machinery spaces. So this previous requirement which we have seen the IC engine air supply should not be affected. So if it is outside machinery spaces, so this is not going to affect it. Okay. Next, it should be activated by two sensors. So we have the flame sensors, we have the uh, your uh, smoke sensors. So these two sensors are installed and they are basically going to uh, attach with uh, your hypermesh system. When both these sensors are activated, then uh, they are going to activate the hypermesh system in that particular zone. Okay. So we will discuss the zone uh, wise uh, requirement. The system should be capable of supplying the water for, for the period of 
minimum 20 minutes to suppress the fire. So system capacity should be at least 20 minutes so that it can suppress the fire. So next uh, coming is your areas to be protected by a hypermist. I told you guys uh, regarding the zone. This is something which is the zone wise. So full engine room is divided into the various zones and in these zones uh, main engine space is the main one primary one that is uh, main engine uh, space above uh, the cylinder head requirement okay next one if you can see over here the auxiliary engine space so that is something which is your each individual generators like your uh, auxiliary engine 1 auxiliary engine 2 and auxiliary engine 3 so these are having the separate requirements of the hypermesh nozzles okay then the next is your boiler space so above the boiler uh, you have the hypermist fitted over there then the next one uh, zone is your incinerator area that is also being covered up uh, with the hypermist system the next one is purifier room you have the hypermist nozzle installed in the purifier room also and then you have the inert gas generator igg in case of the tanker see if it is fitted okay so that is also being protected by the hypermist system and then if it is having the framo auxiliary engines in case of the tankers so in the framo system also uh, you have the uh, so these are the zones which we have already seen now we have the main components of the system what are the main or major components which you can see over here so this is coming one by one that is your pump and the motor these are the main prime factors or the prime machineries which is there for the operation of the system then the next is your suction valve which you can see suction valve is there uh, which is attached to the tank and the next one is your fresh water tank which is there for the supply of the water and then you have the electrical panel main and local control panel so you have the um, local panel which is there generally in the steering compartment you will see that the hypermist uh, local panel is there pump installation is there Mm, and uh, you have the activation system in the fire control station also uh, and uh, the repeater panels are there in your bridge and uh, engine control room also okay so you have the solenoid valve sections each and every individual zones are attached with the solenoid valve when the diagram will come i will explain to you that okay so now in this slide uh, we are going to see about the working of hypermesh system so this is the complete diagram as you can see over here and uh, we are going to have uh, the description of it okay you can see over here so these are the fresh water tanks which you can see uh, this is being filled up uh, by the fresh water generator and uh, uh, these are the uh, hydrophore connections which you can see over this is the hydrophore connection okay so here this connection the this type this line diagram is basically for your hypermesh system okay so uh, in this case you can see the uh, pump over here and this is the uh, suction valve and this is your NRV and this is something which is your uh, drain valve or you can say the testing valve also and this is the uh, main discharge line and after this it is being divided into the various zones which we have discussed earlier and this is the manual valve this is your y type strainer which is being given over here and these are the solenoid operated valve for the each individual zone so once the sensor is being activated of that particular zone then in that case uh, you have the signal coming on from that uh, main control panel and this will activate the uh, solenoid valve so you can see all these diagrams and this this uh, blue color line fresh water system this line is electrical signal this is your air system and this is your fire water system this is the normal valve this is the non return valve and this is your electrical operated non return valve that is your solenoid operated so all these are solenoid operated pumps okay and these are the nozzles which is being fitted over here as you can see the ig generator you can see over here incinerator then this is your auxiliary boiler then your main engine part of it then generator uh, engines various engines different engines one two and three then purifier room and then you have a steering gear room so these are the individual zones which is being supplied over here okay and system flushing valves which is there or the air blowing line you have the air bottle which is fitted over here this is going to blow the air okay and this is your main control panel so description of the diagram is i hope clear and then now we are going okay. to see the 
so uh, which will explain you the hypermesh system so as we know that uh, there is a electrical driven vertical centrifugal multi stage <coughs> in line pump and the pump is fitted to pump the water from fresh water tank to the nozzle so main purpose is to uh, fresh water pump to be sent to the nozzle so that the mist is being formed and the fire is being extinguished okay so next uh, you can see over here uh, when both the detectors smoke and flame will be uh, activated for any protected area then this hypermesh system will be activated the control signal will go uh, and operate the hypermesh system so actually in that case what will happen uh, the operation of your soil nitrate valve and the pump station both will start okay so the detection system signal sent to the main control panel as i have explained to you then this is something which is your main control panel gives the signal to the pump starter unit which will start the pump and the signals to open the soil nitrate valve of relevant area that means the affected zone of it okay and in that zone the water will be available which you can see the pump gets signal and it starts delivering water and the line of that is being set or the nozzle up till the nozzle the section is clear and the nozzle will have the water and then it start releasing the mist or the fog which you can see and then it extinguishes the fire of it okay so the fresh water is always available in that fresh water tank from which it is being attached to ensure this function the line of hydrophore pump is connected above the suction of the hypermesh this is very important point which i uh, have to remind you as uh, this installation makes the uh, availability of water for the hypermesh system anyway in the last uh, slide i will show you the uh, diagram also which can be asked in your mu exam so uh, thing which is over here is advantages of the hypermesh system what are the advantages basically on a sprinkler system this is having a large amount of advantages so first is your automatically activation this is there is no inter, human interface uh, automatic act activation no human interface is being required and uh, when we are talking about uh, the hypermesh system so it is not only the fire extinguishing system it is the detection and alarm system also okay so next is your we can use an affected area only only the effective zone the water will be released on the affected zone not all the zones like in co2 when we have to flood we have to flood the whole engine room so that is something which is advantages over here uh, we have only the affected area going to be affected and the water is being released over here and the water when we talk about this is economically used and uh, water is also easily available and cheap and uh, in one video i will tell you about the how water is very effective in fighting the fire what are the properties of water okay so the water can be utilized over here and the less amount of water is being utilized uh, which is uh, allowing you to restore the place again in a very less time and uh, you can utilize that in advantages over here this is something which is now talking about the pump capacity so pump capacity is approximately 200 liters per minute at 70 bar this is for a standard uh, hypermesh system and for a specific hypermesh system but generally in this range and the nozzle at the nozzle near about 12 to 20 liters per minute at about the 50 bar if the pressure will be at 50 bar so this must be the availability of the water at that thing okay so next uh, you can see over here this is something which is going to remind you the both part of it okay and then when we talk about the uh, how the fog is being generated or the mist is being generated so you can see over here uh, as the system nozzle which is having the specific design okay or the special design with a fine hole the water with a high pressure of about 4 to 10 mpa you can see the pressure okay and when it passes through the nozzle it get converted into the fine particles of size of about 50 to 200 microns this is also important sometimes asked in the mcq okay so pressure is about 4 to 10 mpa and when we talk about this uh, micronic size of the mist so this is about 50 to 200 microns so this is giving you the very extensive fire extinguishing medium okay so diffuser action in the nozzle this uh, nozzle design is such that the diffuser action in nozzle drops in pressure at the nozzle and then what happens the throat breaks the liquid particle into a very fine mist of it okay and then these fine particles are excellent fire extinguishers and it provide a large surface area for the cooling and its other characteristics so when we talk about the extinguishing part of it 
so this is also and, and uh, how this micro fog or the uh, hyper mist extinguishes fire this is also the question asked in the orals basically so if you can see this i am going to show you the effects what are the various effects you can see the cooling effect as we know that the fire is there so it is having the cooling effect the mist contains the water molecules which is having the cooling effect it is going to have the uh, larger coverage area and it affects uh, in a great extent for extinguishing the fire by applying the cooling effect okay another is your smoke illuminating effect the smoke particles being absorbed okay and settled by the mist because mist is heavier and this smoke is being uh, eliminated and uh, this is going to clear that area of smoke okay then oxygen replacement effect mist gets evaporated by taking the latent heat so as it reaches to the fire seat uh, then the latent heat of evaporization is being utilized and due to this the fire seat get more weak and the heat is being taken away from the fire seat and this water vapor uh, which is uh, heavier than air so this replaces the oxygen as you can see the replacement of oxygen is being done so you fire will be deprived of oxygen so this is also one of the effect which is being there in the micro fog and of course this is going to give you the blanket effect also okay and uh, shut off effect or the blanket blanket effect the floating mist as the fog forms <clears throat> a layer of water on the fire okay so what happens this is something which is going to give you the cut off oxygen supply effect so all these four effect cooling effect a smoke eliminating effect oxygen replacement effect and shut off effect these effects are there basically for the hyper mist system for okay. things so next which you can see the alarms associated with it what are the alarms associated so you have the audio visual discharge alarm or you can say the main alarm when the both sensors are being activated so this is in the protected area in your wheelhouse and engine control room this is just going to give you the alarm or the warning regarding the release of the hyper mist okay the next is your the fresh water tank low level alarm low level alarm uh, when the water tank is having the low water level so it is going to give you the warning time and then you have to fill up the water in that particular tank okay pay close attention to the water level in the tank to ensure the water supply all the time that is the requirement we have seen already in solas okay fss code okay so another one thing is there which is there if you have the only one suppose any one sensor get activated then pre warning signal or pre warning alarm will be activated but when both the sensors are getting activated then in case main alarm that we have seen already the discharge alarm which is there okay so this is all which about you can see over here and this uh, is the installation which i have uh, told you guys you have the complete tank the fresh water tank which is shown over here this is the filling line it is written over here return line so fresh water filling line is here and this is your alarm level and uh, this is your uh, the pump suction line okay so water fire, uh, fire water capacity for the local water mist system you can see here this is being indicated by this much of the water always there and once this comes over here this will give you warning alarm so after this you have this much of water also which will ensure the complete fire fighting as per the fss requirement of that is your 20 minutes so this diagram is also being asked in the questions so you can use utilize this diagram and explain about the alarm system which is attached, attached with the fresh water tank okay so i hope the uh, hyper mist is uh, enough for you and uh, in the next coming video i will explain you about the other fixed installations okay so thank you i hope you guys understood this uh, hyper mist fire fighting system fixed installation that is your water um, type uh, local fire fighting system thank you